You are watching us live from the Pentecost International Worship Center, PIWC Atomic, the city on a hill. Thank you for joining us in church today. Share this link with friends and family to join us in service. God bless you. Beloved, may the grace of God be unto you all. Uh, by the grace of God, the lockdown period is over. However, the ban on social meetings and gatherings is still in place, which means that we are unable to meet in our auditorium for church services as we have been doing. And so we want to assure you that we would continue to bring you church services online. And so this is how it's going to be. As usual, on Thursdays, we would be bringing to you Kratos at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, we shall bring to you Mount Zion. Mount Zion is a prayer time. And so this prayer session will be brought to you on Saturday at 6.30 a.m. God willing, on Sundays, we shall be bringing you three services. The first one will be the English service, which will begin at 8 o'clock. Then we shall bring you away the children's service, which will also begin at 9 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, we shall have the account service. We want to invite you to join us online as we celebrate the Lord and pray and ask God to give us grace and strength even for this period. Your life will never be the same. I believe that in no time we shall come back and we shall come back stronger and better than the days before. May the Lord bless you and may his countenance shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.
basic issues in Christianity that everyone must know and understand and always remember. So far, we have established the fact that Jesus is Lord. And just as we received him as Lord, we must, we must follow him as such. And so we have spoken about the, uh, following the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We have also looked at the fact that God has his expectation of us. And one of the expectations that he has of us is for us to be rooted in Christ. Because in, it, it, is, it is that which will guarantee our, our growth and life and stability in him. To, this morning, I want us to look at the third part of this message, which I have titled, A Life Built on Him. A Life Built on Him. May God give us understanding and insight into his word. We we'll still have our base scripture, Colossians chapter 2, 6 to 7, from the New Living Translation. Colossians chapter 2, 6 to 7, from the New Living Translation. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down in him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Amen. So he says that let your roots grow down in him, and let your lives build on him. And so this morning, I want to look at a life built on him. Now, let me begin this way. That there are two reasons why we should build our lives on him. And when I say build your life on him, what I want to talk about is that you build your life and your faith on Jesus Christ alone. Build your life, your Christian life, and your faith on no other thing or no other person but on Christ alone. And I said that there are two reasons why we must build our lives and our faith on Christ. Christ. Number one is that he is the only solid rock. Jesus is the only solid rock upon which we can stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. Jesus is the only solid rock on which we can stand. If you stand on Jesus, and build your lives and your faith on Christ, you are standing on a solid rock. All other ground is seeking sand. That is why he says that. And let your lives be built on him. When you build your life and your faith on any other person or any other thing apart from Christ, there is only one thing that awaits you. That is collapse. If you build your life and your faith on other, any other thing apart from Christ, the only thing that awaits you is that that building will collapse. And so Jesus is the only solid rock on which we stand. He's the only solid rock on which we can build our faith and our life. And we can be sure that on that solid rock we can stand. Let's go through the scriptures and look at this rock. 
In the Old Testament, it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. The rock, his work is perfect. The rock. And so here, he didn't say a rock, but he says that the rock. So he's talking about a particular rock. And he says that rock, the rock, his way, his work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. Then he goes further to identify which that rock is. And he says, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. And so we see that God here is being referred to as the rock, whose work is perfect. Now let's jump to Psalm 18 verse 2. Psalm 18 verse 2, still in the Old Old Testament. It says that, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And so he's talking about this rock, and this rock is not just an ordinary rock, but this rock is also a fortress. It is a fortress in whom we are safe, in whom we take refuge. And then he's, the rock is also our shield. The rock is our horn of salvation. The rock is our stronghold. And so we have come to find out that In the Old Testament, the rock has been defined. And the rock has been said that his ways are perfect. And the rock is our fortress and our stronghold. Now let's jump to the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. And this I will take from the New Living Translation. And all of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock. That traveled with them. And that rock was Christ. And so, Paul, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, tries to explain who that rock is. And you remember, when the people of Israel were on the wilderness, on a journey to to Canaan, it got to a point that they needed water. And Peter, at the first point, had to strike the rock. And water gushed out of of the rock and they drank. And the second time, he was supposed to have spoken to the rock, but he, he mistakenly struck the rock. Yet, water came out. And Paul, in the New Testament, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, is trying to define who that rock is. And he says that all of them drank the same spiritual water. So, out of the rock came water, which was not an ordinary water, but it was a spiritual water. And then they all drank the, from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. And so when the people of Israel were journeying, there was a rock traveling with them. I described that rock as a mobile rock. I described that rock as a traveling rock. A rock that could travel. A rock that was mobile. And the Bible says that that rock was Christ. So Jesus was the moving rock that accompanied the people of Israel when they traveled on the wilderness as they headed towards Canaan, the promised land. And that's why I'm saying that Jesus is the rock. He is the solid rock. He is the solid rock on which we stand. If you build your faith and your life on Jesus, you are building on a rock. A rock that is solid that cannot be broken. And so Jesus is the rock. I come to call all of you and to direct all of you to Jesus Christ. That Jesus will be the center of your life. That Jesus will be the focus of your Christian life. And that you will build your life and you build your Christian faith 
not on personalities, not on human beings, but you build on the rock. He is the only solid rock. You see, rocks are strong and they are impregnable. In other ways, you cannot penetrate a rock. A rock is unconquerable and it is not vulnerable. What I mean to say is that with Jesus as the rock, Jesus is solid. He, he, is, he is so strong that you cannot penetrate through. The name of the Lord, the Bible says, is a strong tower. And the righteous runs into it and they are safe. And so you cannot penetrate through the rock. You cannot conquer the rock. The rock is not vulnerable. May our lives be built on this solid rock. That rock that is not conquerable. Everything can be conquered. Everything can be brought down. Everything can move. Everything can change. But Jesus is solid. Jesus is, is impregnable. Jesus is not vulnerable. You cannot break through him. You cannot penetrate through him. So he is the rock. The strong rock. In fact, rocks are durable. Rocks are permanent. And they are lasting. Ha. You cannot just remove the rock. They neither grow weak. And they will not grow weary. They are not weak with age, but continue same from one generation to another generation. And so Jesus as the rock is durable. He is permanent. Look, heaven and earth shall pass. Everything will change. If you had your pastor as the rock on which you have built your Christian life, your pastor could pass away. Your pastor could change. But if you have Jesus as the rock, Jesus never changes. Jesus is permanent. Jesus is lasting. So no matter the changes of life, we are so solid when we have Christ as our foundation. He is the same from one generation to another generation. In fact, he is the immovable mover. He is the immovable mover. The one who cannot be moved, but he can move others. He is the rock. And so the first reason why you build your life on Jesus, why you build your Christian life and your faith on Jesus Christ is that Jesus is the rock. He is the solid rock on which we can stand. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. If your faith is on any other thing, that thing will sink. That thing will not stand the test of time. But I recommend Jesus to you, the solid rock, the unchangeable, the immovable, the immovable mover, the one who cannot be moved, but rather moves. He is the rock. That is why Paul says that, let your lives be built on him because he is the solid rock. Number two, when your life is built on Christ, you can withstand whatever storm that comes your way. And so lives that are built on Christ are not afraid of storms. They are not afraid of winds. They are not afraid of any kind of wind that will blow. Because they stand on a solid rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. That which is built upon the rock. Stand sure in any stormy season. Ha, when there is any stormy season. When we enter into a season of storm. When we enter into a season of uh, instability. The one that has Jesus as the foundation and has his Christian life built on him, is solid, is not afraid. 
He's not afraid when we enter into a season of storm. And I would want to refer you to one of the parables that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 7 and from verse 24 to 27. Remember, we are talking about a life that is built on him. And I want to read from English Standard Version. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, I'm just relating this story to, to building your Christian life on the rock. And so Jesus is talking about a house that has been built on the rock. A house that has been built on the rock. Remember that we have said that the rock is no other person. The rock is no other thing. But the rock is Jesus Christ. And so verse 25 said, And the rain descended. Remember, take note of this. The rain descended. The floods came. And the winds blew and beat on that house. So look at what happened. Three things. One, the rain descended. Number two, the floods came. Number three, the winds blew. And the rain, the flood, and the winds all came to beat on that house. And the Bible says that, and it did not fall. Why didn't it fall? For it was founded on the rock. When, when, when you are founded on the rock, you are not afraid when the rain descends. You are not afraid when the floods come. You are not afraid when the winds blow because you are founded on the rock. And remember, that when we talk of the rock, the rock is Jesus Christ. And so the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because they were, it was founded on the rock. Now let's look at verse 26. In verse 26, we see another building. And anyone that hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And so there is this other building that has been put up, but it is built on the sand. And let's look at 27. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew on the, and beat on the house, and it fell. And the Bible says that, and great was it for. And the reason why this could not succeed was that it was built in the sand. It was not built on the rock. The sand is any other thing apart from Jesus Christ. It can be a personality. It can be an ideology. It can be any other thinking. It can be the wisdom of this world. It can be a prophet, a pastor, an apostle. It can be anything. Any other thing apart from Christ is the sand. And the Bible says that because that building was built on the sand, it could not survive. It fell. And what hurts me most is this, that the fall was great. And great was its fall. If we are solid on the rock, if we are built on the rock, we cannot fall. But if we build our Christian lives on the sand, then remember that we shall fall. And the Bible says that, and the fall will be great. Take note of this. The test that came to the two buildings were the same. The same test came onto onto the two buildings. It was rain. It was flood. And it was wind. The rain came on the one that was built on the rock. Its floods came to it. And the wind came to it. The same rain, the same flood, the same uh, when came to the one that was not on the rock, the only difference between the two buildings was the rock on which they stood. One stood on the rock, the other stood in the sand. And so the rain could come. The rain, the wind can blow. The storm, the flood will come. But the only difference that will come between the two Christians or among believers is the rock on which they stand. The man that stands on Jesus 
stands on the solid rock who does not fear any of this. May we build our lives, may we build our faith, not in a son, but on the person of Jesus Christ, on the word of Jesus Christ. For the word of God is solid. Even when the heavens pass away, even when the earth blows away, the word of Jesus will stand forever. Forever, O God, thy word is settled in heaven. Blessed is he who builds on the rock, and the rock is Jesus. And when you build on the sand, the Bible says that you will fall, and your fall will be great. Please take note of this. Every building looks secured and safe in a good weather. Every building looks secured and safe in a good weather. When the weather is good, everything is normal. When, when we have normal life and everything is going well, it appears that the building is good, the building is secured, and the building is solid. So every building looks secured and looks good in a good weather, in a normal weather. It is the rain, it is the flood, and it is the storm that will determine the quality of the building. It is when we have gone into trial moments, when you have gone into a stormy period, when you have gone into challenging times, it is then that you will see that if you are not solid on the rock, you are not safe. Ordinarily, every building looks so beautiful. It is well painted. If you look at the design, it is so beautiful. But it is when the storm begins to come, when the wind begins to blow, when there is a shaking, that you get to know whether this building is good or not. But believe you me, we are not going to have good weather all the time. There is going to be a time that we shall enter into a difficult weather. There is going to be a time that the rain will come. There is going to be a time that the flood will come. There is going to be a time that the wind will blow. But in that time, will your building stand secure or your building will collapse? In that season, will your building come out stronger and better or the building will shake and break down? Listen to me. There is always a period of testing. There is a period of testing. A period that when you go through, you know that you are, your faith is being tested. There's a period that when you go through, you know that things are not normal. When it comes to that point, how is your building going to look like? When you have been deserted by friends, when you have been deserted by parents, when everybody has turned against you and the odds are against you, what will be the position of your building? Is it going to collapse or it will stand? It is in the stormy period that the quality of the building is determined. But I want to encourage you, in this time that we are in a good weather, in this time that the weather condition is favorable, build on the solid rock. And the solid rock is Jesus. And the solid rock is Christ. Because there is going to be a day of reckoning. There is going to be a day of testing. There is going to be a day that the foundation of the building will be tested. And when you are solid, when you are on the rock, you will stand. The Bible says, for no other foundation can anyone build or anyone lay than that which has already been laid, which is Christ Jesus. There cannot be any other better foundation. There cannot be any other better, uh, you know, foundation. The only foundation that has been provided is Jesus Christ. And when you build on Jesus, you will not be scared of moments of trials. You will not be scared of moments. In that time, you would have your peace within because you know that you stand on a solid rock. In fact, the key characteristic of the life that is built on Christ is that that life stands in the midst of rain, flood, and wind. The key characteristic 
of a life that is built on Christ is that irrespective of the rain, irrespective of the flood, irrespective of the wind, that building stands. A life that doesn't succumb to changes in the weather. A life that doesn't break down and collapse when the weather conditions change. The man whose life is built on Christ agrees with the Apostle Paul by saying that what shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or a sword. The one whose life is on Christ can stand and make this declaration that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Is it tribulation? Is it a distress? Is it persecution? Is it about hunger or famine? Ah, is it about nakedness? Is it about danger? Is it about sword? The person whose life is built on Christ can look at all these things and declare that what can separate me from the love of God? When tribulation comes, he stands. In the times of distresses, he stands. In the times of persecution, he's solid. In the times of famine, in the times of nakedness, in the times of danger, and in the times of a sword. He is so solid because he's built on Christ, the solid rock, the foundation that cannot be changed. The Bible says that for I am sure, I am sure. In other scriptures, it says that I am persuaded that neither death nor life, huh? death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, even things to come, not powers, not heights, not death, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, this is the saying of the one whose life is on Christ. That person says that, I know, I am persuaded, I am sure that not even death, when I come face to face with death, because I am on Christ, I will still stand and not life, not even angels, not rulers, not things present. And the one that fascinates me even says, is this, that I may not even know things to come, but I know that no matter what will come, I am on the rock. I am under a rock. The rock is higher than I. Jehovah hides me under the rock. So irrespective of what is going to come, my life is on a solid rock. My life is built on the rock. And so I cannot be persuaded. I cannot be changed. I cannot fall. Not anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This is the description of the life that is built on Christ. This morning, if you have built your life on any other thing, I want to change your mind and then build your life on Christ for survival, for stability, for you to be able to stand the test of life. I want you to refocus your attention on Christ. I want you to refocus your mind on Christ. Shift your faith. Shift your attention from human beings and build your faith and your lives on Christ Jesus, the Son of God. He is the only rock and he is the only person on which when we stand, we can stand the test of life. Lebayanda, kalori, andaba, libayando, rabazabahaya, ilabahanda, kito, rabasaya. He is the rock on which we stand. Libo, rabasanda, build your life on Jesus. Build your life on Christ. Kabo, rabasaya, he is the only solid rock. In the name of Jesus, he is the only solid rock. It is on him we can stand the storm of life. The weather condition may change. The weather environment may change. But Jesus is the solid rock. 
Liba babara basanda rabasaya kabe. Le boyanda rabasaya. Le barabasaya kate layanda. Iba handa rabasanda. Le bayanda rabasanda. Liba dabasaya. Le bayanda. Rababa rabasaya. Le bayanda. Iya na la babaka bayanda rabasaya. Le. In the Lift up your voice in prayer. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy live on Jesus. On Christ the solid road. On Christ the solid road. Oh, on the ground. That my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock that I stand. I will stand today. I will stand tomorrow. I will stand forevermore. Until Jesus Christ comes. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. All other grounds will fail. Everything will fail. Human beings will fail. Material things will fail. But on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. Can you lift up your voice? Let's sing together. My hope is built on Latin earth. Go. My hope is built on Latin earth. Oh, on Jesus. I dare not try the sweetest prayer. I dare not trust the sweetest spring. Oh, me. Oh, oh, cry the solid rock.
voice, let's sing together. Wherever you are, at the center of it all. It's you. One more time. It must be Christ, it must be Christ alone. In Christ alone, in Christ alone. In Christ alone. At the center of it all, it's you, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. If you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you to accept Jesus right now, wherever you are. If you want to receive Jesus, just say this after me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that He died for my sins resurrected for my justification and today I accept Jesus as Lord and my Savior I will walk with him all the days of my life I will serve him and I will live for him Father we thank you for this one Lord and everyone who has heard your word today establish that person in you come a person's foundation focus. Slow. Let us be able to stand with Paul and say that we are persuaded that nothing in this world neither things present and things even to come mm. nor neither rulers nor powers would take us away and separate us Just from me. your life. Father we want to remain firmly established in you Amen. now and forevermore. We bless your name we give you praise. We give you glory. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. Amen. May you be established in him yes, Lord. all the days of your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now this has been brought to you from Pentecost International Worship Center. The city on a hill. We invite you to link up with us and 
God will richly bless you. My name is Samuel J. Obobi. Amen. At the center of it all is you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, say, at the center of it all, it's you that. Thank you for joining us in church today. We believe you've been blessed by today's service. Share your experiences with us via our various social media platforms. You can also reach us via the numbers on your screen. Join us again for our next service. God bless you.